Hi guys, Mrs. A here. We are finding average rates of change on specific intervals uh, on a curve. So to do this, we have to think about the secant line that passes through the two points on either end of the interval. So for example, we have the interval between two and three with this equation that represents a parabola. So this is a curve. If we were dealing with lines to find the average rate of change, we would just be finding the slope of that line and at any given interval the slope would be the same and that would be the rate of change. But with a curve we don't have straight lines so it's not as simple as finding just the slope of the curve because we can't do that. So instead we find two points in this case, the points were x is 2 and x is 3, and we draw a straight line between those two points. That line is the secant line, and that is the line that we want to find the slope of. So, for instance, if we have this kind of a parabola, and we choose um, two points here and here, and we want to find the average rate of change between those two points, we would draw a straight line Sorry, between those two points and we would find the slope of that straight line and that would give us the average rate of change between the two points which is the rate of change of that interval. We can do this by using a formula that looks very similar to the formula that we learned for the slope of a line. So to find the average rate of change we are going to use a formula that says uh, g at x2 minus g at x1 over x2 minus x1. Now this looks a lot like the formula for slope. If you remember this was y2 and this is y1 and then we still have the x2 minus x1 in the denom denominator. Uh, we've changed it now into our function notation. So let's use this and sub in the values that we have. So we're going to do g at 3 minus g at 2 over 3 minus 2. So this means we take 3 and we sub it in for x in the original function and get that value. Then we take 2 and sub it in for x in the original function and get that value and we subtract them and uh, subtract the x values in the denominator and then divide. So let's fill it in. I'm going to fill it in within the formula, but if you feel more comfortable doing it outside of the formula, that is equivalent. It doesn't matter. So this is going to look like 4, 3 squared minus 5 times 3 plus 1. So that is the g at 3 portion minus 4 times 2 squared minus 5 times 2 plus 1 and that's the g at 2 portion there and of course this is still over 3 minus 2 so if we calculate this part we're going to get to 22 minus this part here is 7 and then over 1 and then when we calculate that our average rate of change is going to be 15 for this problem. Let's just do this one more time for a smaller interval. So if we have a smaller interval, we do it in the same way. Now this interval is going to give us a more accurate calculation for the rate of change at the x value 2 because it's closing in on that x value 2 compared to the interval here between 2 and 3, which is a larger interval. So we're going to use the same formula here. Average rate of change is equal to, um, this time we'll do g at 2.1 minus g at 2 over 2.1 minus 2. So if you sub the 2.1 into the original function, we're going to get a value of 8.14 
minus the g at 2 was the same as we had in the previous question. It was 7. Then over 2.1 minus 2. And when we subtract and then divide, we're going to get 1, sorry, 11.4 as the rate of change now along this smaller interval. Thanks for watching. Mrs. A loves math.